Thank you, God, again, for the word of prayer. Thank you, God, for being so marvelous. Lord, you do great things. We praise you, Lord, for this moment to hear a word from you. We thank you, God, for bringing us through danger, seen and unseen. And we praise you for what you're getting ready to do right now in this house. In Jesus' name, amen. You will be coming with me again to John chapter 19. John chapter 19. We will be reading verses 25 to 27. We've been so blessed by this choir. Amen. Amen. We praise God for them. Amen. John chapter 19. And we will be reading verses 25 through 27. I preached from this scripture two Sundays ago. God put it back on my heart today as we close out Women's Day. I'm grateful again for our homecoming today. Looking forward to having an awesome time after worship. So please prepare and, and get ready for that. Uh, John 19, 25 to 27. When you have it, say amen. John 19, 25 to 27. And I'll be reading from the New International Version. He says there near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, with the wife, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. I want to preach this little while in prayer for the subject. Surviving a painful experience. Surviving a painful experience. My brothers and sisters, it is human nature to use choice words when you are in pain. It is human nature to use certain words in reaction to a tragic issue in life. When pain hits us suddenly and Pinches us off guard, or all of a sudden appears in our life, we all know a few words that will express our plight, our predicament, and our perspective. When physical pain hits you all of a sudden, when you hit your funny bone, it ain't so funny, or stub your toe, or get a paper cut, you know words you use to express your plight, predicament, and your perspective while in pain. You just might end up saying something you wouldn't say in a regular conversation. Not only while in physical pain, but also when life circumstantial pain hits you all of a sudden. You have a few words to say when you're eating and ketchup falls on your uniform or work clothes. It might not be physical, but it's circumstantial and it bothers you because it hurts you because people for the rest of the day will see you walking around with a dirty shirt or blouse. When you're driving and the person all of a sudden cuts you off, you know a few words that will express your plight, your predicament, and your perspective. The words you know to use, even though the person who cuts you off may hear you or may not be looking at you, but I just feel like I have to express it anyway. Believe it or not, that's light circumstantial pain. But heavy, heavy circumstantial pain is not for that car accident you almost had, but for that marriage that did not work. And every time you think about it, it not only sends your mind and your heart somewhere, but your words somewhere. When your spouse upsets you and does the same thing over and over again that they know you don't like or you can tell they weren't listening the first time or that bully at school, these are her heavy circumstantial pains. But what words do you use when spiritual pain hits you? When that loved one dies and you all of a sudden remember that I have to go to one day and you no longer use the words if I die, but now you come to understand when I die. What kind of words do you use when you have had it with life and you feel and you feel as if there's no reason to keep on living? You know spiritual pain, the pain people can't tell you have by looking at you, but you hide it and mask it one day at a time, on a day-to-day basis, not a scrape, a cut, nor a bruise, but pain deep on the inside, a pain, not a 
God, we are strong, Lord. We pray that you can help you to heal. We pray that you feel when you are reminded of a situation and tears out of a sudden begin to gather in the well of your eyes. When I, when, when, when I say pain, I'm talking about heavy circumstances of pain. My dear friends, Mary is at the foot of the cross. Watching her son bleed to death and seeing him gasping for air. Theologians, historians, and scientists tell us that those who suffered death on the cross did not die from hemorrhaging or bleeding to death, but rather they died from asphyxiation or suffocation. Because he hung on the cross and he slouched over from the weight of his upper torso, because he tried to relieve his pain from his hands, but by doing so, his lower extremities suffered from pain, so as he slouched down, his lungs begin to collapse. So as Mary is at the foot of the cross, there are others there that you can hear her son gasping and gasping for air. He's not suffering from asthma or COVID-19, but he's suffering from the cross. And Mary is in pain because she sees her son in pain because there's no parents that have to bear their child. And Mary is suffering from a spiritual painful circumstance. Jesus, in the midst of his own painful experience, helps his mother and his disciples get through their painful experience by forcing them to accept the answer. In other words, in order to survive a painful experience, you have to understand. And there will be an after in your pain. And I hope you put your put your hand on yourself and say, I know it don't look right right now. I know it looks right right now. But trouble don't last for long. So you have to put your hand on yourself and tell yourself, there will be an after. I hope that it goes. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not
experience of having a painful experience. You will survive. You will come out of this. You will be better. You will be stronger. You will be wiser. God is just pulling you and getting you ready for what He's got for you. God says, I can't give it to you with the way you are right now. But I gotta get you ready for it. I gotta take you through some things. I gotta, I gotta make you experience some things first. I got an anointing on you that's so powerful that if it ever comes out of you, the world will never be the same. I gotta take you through some stuff. I gotta get you ready for it. I gotta prepare you for it. You're gonna be better after this, I promise you. You're gonna be strong after this. You're gonna be better, you're gonna be wise. Come on, just watch some place if you know it, if you know it, if you know it, if you know it. If you know it, if you know it, if you know it. If you know it. Hallelujah, God. We thank you today. Hallelujah. We thank you today, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you today.